Greetings everybody, this is Elias Planakos from Wireless Insider and today I have with me the brand new Samsung Galaxy Note, model number I717. I'm going to be going over with you the different versions of this device to avoid some confusion. I'm going to go through the hardware specifications, a test to see how long it takes this device to turn on from a cold start. I'm going to go through the software, including TouchWiz, uh, Samsung software on this device, and going to see how web browsing is on it, as well as view a video on YouTube, see how multimedia plays back, and in the end, a list of small things that you may or may not have known about this device that may make or break your decision to go out and buy it. So let's go ahead and get started right away. Greet with the box. Let's unbox it. Why not? A whole bunch of quick run through of the specifications on the back. For some reason, they put the darn serial number over the crease of the phone and how it opens. I don't have a knife, so I'll just yeah, prop it open and let's look at this guy. Whoa, look at the size of this thing. <laughs> so here we have, we have the Galaxy Note looking right back at us with a whole bunch of stickers that I'm definitely going to take off, so don't worry about that. Get to that in a second. Plastic insert. Paper. Save the trees, man. Come on, no one reads this stuff anyways. Come on now. And we have some little funky stuff in here. What do we have? We have the USB charging brick. Okay. Micro USB data cable. Cool. Nice and shiny. Cool. A silicone earbuds, which only means that it comes with a silicone headset. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Now with 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, it does have multimedia buttons on here for volume and pause play and voice dialing. So you do have that, you know, functionality built into the headset. And a massive battery for a massive phone, uh, <laughs> rated at 2,500 milliamp hours. Uh, easy to say, it's one of the largest batteries you can find in the cell phone, because this is the biggest cell phone, <laughs> right next to the Dell Streak. So um, let's go ahead and put this box on the side, and let's take all these stickers off here so you can see this guy in person. Oh, wow, look at this thing. Uh, instructions are on the back of how to replace and remove this um, plastic battery plate. Important, it's a little tricky on some phones. I'm talking about you, Galaxy S X. <laughs> so, looking at the phone itself, it's very large, and that has a lot to do with the 5.3 inch HD display. Um, but we'll get to that in a second. On the front, you do have four capacitive touch buttons uh, for menu, home, back, and search. You have a two megapixel camera in the front, taking video at 720p. 8 megapixel camera with LED flash, of course, can take video up to 1080p. Uh, speaker phone is down here. On the right side, you have the power button as well as how to turn it on standby and on and off. Uh, 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, another microphone. Volume controls on the left side, volume up and volume down. And the bottom, you have the charger, microphone, and stylus. Because, of course, this is designed to be a hybrid or crossbreed between a cell phone and a tablet. So, yeah, you don't think they're just kidding around with this, a 5.3-inch display. There's a reason for that. So let's go ahead and put this guy, because we'll get to him in a second. Uh, what I did want to show you right away is the difference between this one and the other version of this device, the Samsung Galaxy Note N7000. And hopefully my Photoshop skills are good, because that should magically appear right there. Yeah, hopefully. And... Uh, there are only two major differences between these two devices. Hopefully it's there. <laughs> um, first being the uh, i717 newer one over here has a dual core 1.5 gigahertz processor, uh, I believe referred to as a Scorpion, whereas this guy over here has a dual core 1.4 gigahertz processor, also maybe referred as the Exynos. Now the thing is, 0.1 gigahertz, not big of a deal, but it's important to know, as well as this guy supports LTE, which means really fast internet speeds. Uh, <laughs> so you can achieve theoretical maximum download speeds of 75 megabits per second. This guy over here, well, his maximum on HSPA plus is 21 megabits per second. So small difference of processor. Everything else I say going forward is the same between these guys, except this guy is LTE compatible. All right, fetish. Cool, and we'll get this guy here. Let's go ahead and take a look what other stuff we have here. Just open it up, accessible by the little thumb drive and a little thumb insert. But you want to see how thin this device is. Before I move on, let me show you how this guy looks between other devices. This is the LG Optimus LTE, which is a 4.5 inch display. And we have Blackberry Bold <laughs> and the iPhone. So uh, most two, the most common devices I believe you will see out there are these devices here. So yeah, look at the size of that thing. <laughs> Hello, you can see me. How are you doing? Um, it's a mirror reflection I have on that guy. So that's the iPhone 4. And you can see there's a significant difference in size. Let me do it this way so you're not distracted. Yeah, it's a huge foam. And I'm not worried about scratching this phone because it's got Gorilla Glass on it. All right, so there you go. There's your size difference. Bam, Blackberry iPhone. <laughs> Massive Galaxy Note. Let's get these guys out of here. So let's open the back plate like I was going to do. 
and plastic. You know, that's all right. That's usually what it does to keep it nice and light and simple. Near field communication, transceiver, receiver, and all that. You have a SIM card slot and expandable memory. So you're not stuck with the internal memory. You also have the option for expandable. And as always, uh, I'm gonna breeze right through here. I wanna test to see how long this phone takes to turn on from a battery pull. So let me just cut to that right now. It took a little while to get that back plate on, but let me zoom in a bit here so you can see what's going on as well. There we go. Okay, so let's see how long it takes the Galaxy Note to turn on. Three, two, one. Excellent. So while it is turning on, let's go over the specs real quick, because I can imagine this will be a quick turn on time. It does have a dual core 1.5 gigahertz processor uh, with one gigabyte of RAM, internal memory of 16 gigabytes. It's running Android 2.3 Gingerbread with Samsung TouchWiz 4.0 on top of it. That's Samsung software running on top of Android. It is, uh, we mentioned does have Gorilla Glass and um, it does have a 2500 milliamp hour battery, which is essential for a phone of this size. Uh, it also has buttons down here that are significantly brighter than the other version of this phone. So these capacitive touch are brighter. And we have 29 seconds here for it to turn on. Real quick, I want to get in here and I want to see how quickly it swipes the screen to screen. See, media, whoops, <laughs> totally locked it there. It is still scanning and you can see it is smooth going screen to screen, all right. Well, it's done. <laughs> all right, well, <laughs> it was too fast for me to demonstrate that, but you get the point. Very smooth scrolling, cool. And then let's go through some other funky stuff. So yeah, 29 seconds for it to turn on, not too shabby. So let's go real quick through the software because I don't want to run too long here. We're gonna go through applications and it does come with quite a bit. Uh, what I did want to show you actually is the memory because some people may be misled as to uh, the capacity of the device. If we go over here to storage, it will say uh, 10 gigabytes. That's because um, 16 gigabytes after it's formatted, plus the applications that are installed and TouchWiz 4.0 on top of this, it will um, reduce that. So it comes with 16 gigabytes after all those shenanigans. It's about a net of 10 gigabytes available for you to play with. So just want to clarify that. But when we get in here, you do have a whole bunch of applications, calculator clock of the essentials, crayon physics, again, based on you know touch input, a gallery, a Kias Air, which is pretty cool. I think I said that right, Kias Air, which uh, when you select it, you are able to connect this to your wireless Wi-Fi network and then access the device from a internet browser, which works pretty well. When you hit start, boom, it's gonna give you an IP address connected to your Wi-Fi network. You type that into an internet browser on your computer and you can access the content of this phone. Uh, theoretically, I haven't tried it out yet here. Uh, do with latitude maps, any di a mini diary, which is nice. The device is so large, it'd be perfect as a device to use for keeping notes, presentations, you know, things like that. Uh, Polaris Office, it's nice to see you can open up certain Word and Excel documents. Uh, Market, of course, Samsung apps, Samsung's dedicated application store. And uh, voice recorder, YouTube, duh, <laughs> S-Memo, which is pretty cool. I'm gonna show you that now, since it does make use of the stylus. It does say you wanna double tap on the screen to enable or uh, to continue using the application. And uh, this is referred to as um, pinch zoom. So let me get out of here. I'm gonna pop the stylus out, which is pretty cool. It does uh, have a little nub here, so it's easy for you to reach in there and slide it out. It does have a button right there. You see that white section and a little Wacom style uh, tip, which is nice. So I'm gonna put this guy down. If he doesn't want it to rotate, there we go, very smooth there. And let's open up this guy here. First time users, you'll notice it's not doing anything. Well, remember what I told you in the instruction screen? Double tap, oh, while holding this down. So uh, I'll show you that again. Apparently that exits, okay. <laughs> Let me get back in there. Um, there we go. Hold that button down to multitask. You can start drawing or whatever. You can also change the size of your brush. So you can change the size, you see it up there. It's getting bigger and smaller, and you can change it to any color you want. Get out of there. Oh yeah, <laughs> you don't want to save, cancel, don't want to save, nope, and it's there. So cool, let's get out of there. Let me leave the styles on the side here. Or you can even navigate using this screen to screen. Uh, since we're on the home screen, we'll just go through real quick. You can pinch the zoom to see all your home screens. This is traditional of uh, TouchWiz 4.0, uh, as is adding widgets. Um, Let's go to wallpapers. I'm gonna throw a live wallpaper on here to see how smooth this guy can scroll. I'm going from screen to screen. Uh, I always had good experience. I like the blue seat. Let's do that. Cool, and you see it's loaded. All right, great. Go from screen to screen, very smooth. I like this. No fingerprints on my screen. <laughs> it works very well, doesn't lag, nice. Let's go as quickly as possible between two screens. All right, let me get you up close and personal so you can see as well. Let's see how smooth this guy moves with an animated live wallpaper. Very smooth indeed. Let's see with your finger. 
great, let's get into applications. And, whoops, there we go. That's awesome, nice and smooth. Uh, if we go in here, we hold down the desktop, you can show uh, the widgets section. It shows you a whole bunch of them down here and they're categorized in groups of four. So if you slide halfway, it will jump to the next section. So watch this. Yep, jumped over there. Uh, it comes with all the essentials, you know, uh, Google search, certain types of clocks. But what I really liked was the integrated uh, application monitor. Click that and you can even, uh, yeah, I clicked it by accident. Let me go in there, click and drag it move it around, whatever, and it tells you how many applications are running. And that way, if you want to kill them automatically, you tap it once and it's there. So it's built in. So now that we're there, uh, let's go into the web browser. This is hooked up to a Wi-Fi connection here, capable of broadcasting and receiving B or using the Wi-Fi network on BGN, both 2.4 and 5 gigahertz spectrums. Let's go ahead and go to, well, let's go to Engadget.com. Very big phone, very big keyboard. Um, before you ask, I'm gonna answer you. Uh, you cannot use this to input text. Sorry guys, <laughs> you can only choose between manual text input or swipe, which some of you may see. So for example, I can go H-E-L-L-O, hello, you know? So you never have to, which makes it very easy with the stylus, by the way. Normally use your finger. In this case, using a stylus is really cool. Like H-E-L-L-O, space, H -E yeah. Hello there. So yeah, let me get out of there. Let's go to N, Hoppa. chugging along there. Tilt and hold to zoom. That's an option you can turn on and off in the settings. So for example, this is the mobile. Don't know if it'll work here. Temporarily unavailable. No. Well, can I pinch the zoom? Okay. You can't. Let's go to desktop. Nah. Now the resolution of the display is very nice. Since it is a HD display, the text is very crisp. And since it's so large, it does fill in your entire view. It's very easy to see what you're doing on, especially on websites. Um, of course, this does support flash, so that's probably why it's a little choppy and it's still loading, and it's done loading. All right, a little choppy here, but again, this is a very advanced website. Um, I would have expected a bit smoother, maybe it's because I do have flash content on. Yeah, okay. Well, still, <laughs> let's go ahead and see what it can do when you are at a website. Zoom on in, great. Go on all the way in. And you do have the text. I want you to see how clear that text is. Uh, yeah, massive, <laughs> very easy to read. That's what's important. And of course, with any other reader like Kobo or um, any other tablet reader on this, when you have to read books, it will be very easy to read that in your emails just because of the high density in pixels per inch. I mean, this, is, this does have 329 pixels per inch. So yeah, <laughs> very clear, very easy to see what you're doing. And um, let's see how quickly it rotates again. Nice, I love that smooth animation. It's so cool. Nice. So let's try doing that when you're zoomed all the way in. Cool. Now let's try browsing real quick while you are zoomed in. Content maintains its place. Keep going. Hands free. Going it. Nice. Great. So let's get out of here. Let's go to YouTube. So on the next screen here. And as always, I'm going to demonstrate the uh, uh, Movie Trailer 300. Just to be consistent in all of my reviews here. Great, volume should be on max. Let me make sure of that. Great, should rotate. Cool. Nice, right, so speaker. What I do want you to pay attention to is the treble, the high pitch of this. It's not the loudest thing considering it's a small phone. It's actually pretty average compared to other devices on the market. But when it comes to treble, uh, for example, in this case, uh, he should draw his sword and you should be able to hear that very clearly. I don't know if you guys heard that, but it's very sharp, very clear. And that's what I like. Bass reproduction is important, but so is the highs. If you don't really hear the highs, the music sounds very boring. Um, what I'm gonna start doing my reviews as well is show you how loud the phone can get in a ringtone because you know that movie I use is not necessarily always a good example. So real quick, I'm gonna just go into settings here, sound, and uh, just show you how loud the volume does get for a ringtone. Yeah. So it's loud, <laughs> except of course, um, the volume of the movies you watch on YouTube are dependent on the actual movie themselves. So there we go. Um, 
yeah, uh, I'd love to show you some other things in the settings, but you know what, uh, this is a pretty good overview of what this device is capable of. It's very smooth, easy to use, very large display. And on that note, let's move on to the small things, things you may or may not have known about, things that may make or break your decision to go and buy this phone. First thing I noticed is that it does have expandable memory, important for a lot of people who do want to have micro SD expansion, so that way you don't have everything uh, just on the internal memory, which is super duper. Um, this is upgradable to ice cream sandwich. I deliberately wait till the end for you patient folks out there to tell you that it's coming out. It will have ice cream sandwich, which will completely blow your mind with something this large using that interface. Remember, large. Yeah, big phone. Uh, considering it's a cross between a cell phone and a tablet, this is definitely something that can use ice cream sandwich and ICS will be coming to it. Um, next thing, large display, it fills your peripherals is one thing I did notice because if this is, with a display this large, when it does get close to your face, it does take up more of your field of view. So it feels you're more immersed, you can see more, although of course because of the large size you can see more. The important thing is it is taking up more of your viewable space, eliminating any distractions around your viewable area so you feel completely immersed. And on that note, I just remember I totally forgot to show you the camera in the gallery, which I want to do right now. Speaking of immersion. Uh, very smooth uh, to show you this with and with flash because I don't want to run this too long. I did already take pictures of my Blackberry and uh, the flash is so darn bright. It made my black case look brown. Yeah, so that's a pretty powerful flash on this sucker. Uh, and the zoom is very great. Uh, you can see how close you can see all the dirt. I mean, you can't complain about that, right? Oh, and the reason it's doing that is because it's using the accelerometer to zoom in and out. That's another feature you can turn on or off. I just want to explain to you why it looked jaggy. And this is without flash. Eh, there's a job all right, but there's a reason there's flash there so that you can illuminate your subject. So sorry, I skipped that. I got it here. Pinch the zoom is nice. You also have that option to use the accelerometer to do your pinching and zooming for you. This also works inside the web browser. Okay, and then what else do we have here? Uh, the task manager widget was great so you could visually see all your applications. You have six apps running. Okay, tap it. Cool. You want to see what's taking up your memory, how much you have available. Nice. If you don't want, kill them all. That way you can have all the available resources you need for what you're doing. Uh, the calendar tabs here, uh, I noticed one small thing, it, since it's a large display, it gives you more of an agenda look. So if you click this little arrow here, it does give you a little, sort of like an actual physical agenda. And it also does this when you rotate the device. Bam. And there it is again. So yeah, display this large, it could replace multiple things and that's what they're trying to do here. Samsung's trying to find something to work with you in your everyday life. And of course the stylus is really nice as well, right? So this is some little extra feature they threw in there, great for drawing or anything like that. Even taking screenshots by pressing down this button, holding down the screen, you take a screenshot and you can start modifying that. Yeah, a whole bunch of little secrets at the end of this video. I know, I did it on purpose. You can start drawing and doing whatever you want. So, yep. That's cool. And last but not least, the apps that come on the phone are pretty massive, including the Keys Air app, lets you control this using your computer. Oh, what else do we have here? <laughs> There's also one more important note. If you are upgrading to this device on the SIM card network, this is an LTE device. If you do not have, you people out there, if you do not have an LTE compatible SIM card, it ain't gonna work. You'll have to change your SIM card. Keep that in mind if you order this online. You should have a version three or a upgraded version SIM card to work with this device to take advantage of those LTE internet speeds. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. A little long, but I think we can all agree it was worth it. Hopefully I uh, helped you out here and give you some useful information. Again, this is Elias Plyanakos for Wireless Insider. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section below. And if you like what you saw here today to support me, please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching and until next time, take care.